Hello and welcome to CGS. We are talking about gold exploration and development in Central America. And I have great pleasure to be joined by Mark Child, Chief Executive of Condor Gold. Hi, Mark. How are you? Uh, good morning. Well, thanks. Your morning as well. OK, I was just checking because you're you're usually based in the UK, so I thought I'd just check there. We've actually uh, run into each other quite a bit in the past month or so uh, in, in Miami um and in um and in nicaragua where you have your la india project um let, let's start there um you've got a sales process underway for la india i think a lot of people are surprised that you made a formal announcement that a sales process is underway why why did you do that um we just we, we announced on the 22nd of november that uh the company uh, Condo Gold PLC, the UK company, is putting the assets up for sale of our project in Nicaragua. Uh, one of the reasons that triggered that is that we were about to do a financing. Uh, and in the UK, and you know, we're dual listed on AIM and in the TSX, uh, we, we had to have a clearing announcement uh, because our major shareholder, Jim Mellon, who has a 20% shareholding in Condor, uh, wanted to participate and lead that financing round. And because we decided to sell the assets, that was deemed to be a material news, as you'd expect. So we 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 decided as a board to uh, announce, uh, put that announcement out, and it just cleared the air as to what the strategy is for the company as well. So to two reasons: one, set the strategy, make it clear; two, it allowed uh, the, the directors to support the financing. Okay, thank you, Mark. Now, um, in in the ideal world, if you could paint your perfect deal, what would your perfect deal be? Well, we certainly want to try and sell the assets for as much as possible. Uh, like and that might, might sound a, an obvious statement, but uh, we think the Landia project is pretty special with our 2.4 million ounces uh, that's fully permitted with the land and a sag mill uh, and, and good to construct and with a feasibility study completed. So uh, it, it, it's a very attractive asset in a country where you can own 100%, uh, unlike most of Africa, uh, <clears throat> and a government that fully supports mining. So I think we are open as a board. The announcement is that we're selling the assets of the company. Um, and so that would we would want that to be sold for cash. Uh, there's always a possibility that that at a later stage could flip into a, a transaction where somebody acquires the shares. Uh, but at the moment, all the teasers and information with the, that have gone out through the investment bank have been to sell the assets uh, in the country. OK, um, we bumped into each other in uh, in Nicaragua, as I said, and you were at that moment in time conducting uh, one or two site visits. So um, there's obviously some interest. Um, how's that process going? Yes, that was a surprise to, to, to see you in the same hotel uh, in, uh, in in Managua. Uh, yes, we had two back to back site visits. Uh, one was uh, from a, from a Chinese group, um, very large uh, gold producer in China. And the other was from a TSX uh, listed uh, company. Um, and uh, so there's interest. I mean, the Chinese actually took them three days to fly into Nicaragua. They had eight days on site. Uh, they, they they did uh, due diligence at the asset level. And they did uh, met, met the government and the Minister of Energy and Mines and so forth to get comfortable with, with Nicaragua. So there is interest. Those are two site visits. We've actually had a third one. Um, we've got nine companies in total under non-disclosure agreements. Uh, we've had letters of intent stroke uh, non-binding offers uh, from three uh, gold producers. Uh, so there's a lot of interest. Uh, gold uh, knocking on the door of $2,000 an ounce helps uh, and fully permitted projects and um, pretty de-risked and on a plate for someone uh, are very few and far between. So there's a lot of interest in the project. Thank you, Mark. Now, very ballpark numbers. India can sustain production of, let's say, 100,000 ounces a year for at least 10 years, uh, just over $100 million uh, capex. There's pretty much ballpark numbers there. So um, three non-binding offers. Um, obviously, non-binding means, you know, the, the people who made those offers don't necessarily have to come through with them. So what, what's the process and the timing to get those non-binding or to potentially binding offers? Yeah, that's a that's a sixty four thousand dollar question. Uh, it, it's part of a uh, the process that's advised on by the investment bank in London. Uh, th that for people to show serious intent, they're asked to submit non binding offers by certain dates, uh, and do site visits and due diligence. And that's really just to demonstrate that they're 
they're serious and credible and and so forth uh and then then you go into a short list into a stage two if you like of of the sale process uh, and that's more nuanced people uh do the site do site visits and maybe they do a de- extra site visits they conduct due diligence we've got a virtual data room uh, with all the all the data in from all our drilling and all the technical studies and so forth um and i've actually just had additional questions through from one of those two parties who did the site visits i've just had uh, uh six different questions through this morning uh so th- it takes time uh, that not only do they have to go and spend a lot of money to 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 acquire uh, condor's assets but they've also got to put up as you say a minimum of 100 100 million dollars and and 100 100 million dollars is the fs scenario that gets you close to the 100,000 ounce of gold per annum but on a pa we actually said it could do 150,000 ounce of gold per annum for 9 years so there is that's by adding 1.2 million of underground in and so we are pushing for a valuation for the obviously the bigger production scenario because we think we've shown a very clear path to it being 150,000 and the other the other aspect of getting the value up is to put something for the exploration upside. We've got a massive land package of 580 square kilometers. Uh, the mine at Minolandia produced over 570,000 ounces of gold at 13 grams. And as a former director pointed out to me, great proof of concept. What better concept do you want that you can actually get it out? It's actually by Naranda of Canada, very reputable uh, back in the day, but it closed, uh, mine closed in 1956. So it's 76 years ago. And in that time, there's been no extraction, unlike LMR nearby, which has produced you know, a few million ounces since then, and still prolific and finding gold. If you look at Calibre, done a fantastic job out there. Uh, they're spending, putting 100,000 metres of drilling in Nicaragua per annum and had great exploration success. And I've no doubt that land your project, what it what it needs is, really needs, is somebody to go and put that 100,000 metres per annum in and then go and find the extra 5 million ounces, which we've you know, shown the path to. But we, we need a valuation for that upside as well. Okay, thank you, Mark. Now, obviously, with the the site visits, that's uh, part of companies' due diligence on the assets. But um, companies also need to do due diligence on the jurisdiction. And and last year, towards the end of last year, Nicaragua got a bit of a knock when the US government put sanctions against specific individuals of the Ortega regime. Um, And, you know, in the the initial reaction of a lot of investors was, you know, they're a bit scared and surprised and things of that. to what extent do you think investors understand that those um, sanctions are against specific individuals and not against the gold sector in general or against companies operating in Nicaragua? Um, it's been a challenge uh, for the industry, uh, the the view of the political risk. <laughs> and that, that's why you know, we're valued at $16 an ounce in the ground today versus companies bought in Australia, which you might have seen last week, there was a deal, you know, it, it's going for over sort of $60 an ounce in the ground, and they haven't got permits, and they haven't got an FS out, and they haven't bought the land. So, you know, they and they haven't got a sag mill. Uh, if you go to Canada, the transaction's going, Sabina Gold and Silver, it's over $100 an ounce in the ground, which B2 Gold bought recently. So we're, we're kind of sitting there at $16. Now, that's only linked in with a, with a political risk in my my view, from a, from a construction and a technical perspective, there's nothing to stop this being a mine. It's we've done the FS to a very very uh, high degree, a high standard, and a high degree of accuracy. Um, so so I think, and just back to the sanctions, sorry to, to to scoop back to that. I think people realise that it is actually based on individuals and not on companies. So the US isn't trying to uh, uh, hurt, if you like, or uh, in the, uh, the the ordinary person in Nicaragua, that that's not the objective. The objective is to uh, target senior officials and get uh, Nicaragua to move towards a more democratic route, essentially. And uh, they've had some success. That that pressure that the U- United States put on resulted in about a month to five weeks ago on two hundred and twenty two political prisoners actually being flown from Nicaragua. I'm sure you heard about this when you were down there, Paul. They 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 went to Washington. Uh, that's a great coup. Uh, and the big question there is, why? What deal was struck? Uh, uh, it's a fantastic political coup, if you like. Probably shouldn't use the word coup, but it's a political yeah. triumph for 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 U.S. diplomacy to actually get 222 people out of jail or house arrest and flown to Washington. Now, 
one of the questions I've been asking when I was down there, you know, what does that signal and what does it mean? And what has uh, the presidency in Nicaragua got in return for that, uh, offering this to the United States? And there's just a chance, uh, uh, and having spoken to some very senior people down there and well-connected people, that the worst could be over from a political perspective. Um, and, uh, you know, I, 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 you know, if you were being particularly optimistic, you, you'd say that there'll be a thawing of relationships. That's that's a signal. Um, and uh, you know, perhaps the worst is behind us from a political, from a US sort of Nicaraguan political perspective. Um, so let, let's hope that that's the that's 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 the case. And as the mining companies of the, the producing mining companies have all stated, this doesn't impact on their operations, and that's really important. Uh, they can st and, and the currency is still fully convertible in Nicaragua, uh, and the government's still very supportive of mining. Thank you, Mark. Um, and I think that just to sort of reiterate that point, um, Calibri mining stock has rebounded, I think, 50, 60 percent since that low point when the sanctions came out. So, um, you know, people are really sort of getting to grips and understanding, I think, uh, um, what the sanctions mean and what they don't mean. OK, so um, you've got the process, the cell process running for La India. Is there any work going on at La India this year? Uh, we, we're, we're conserving cash at the moment as we go through the the sale process you know we 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 prefer not to go back to shareholders at any stage and uh ask for capital so we're conserving capital if i had more cash i'd love to be doing some drilling we've got so many targets that we could i sent, sent an email to a director the other day saying you know uh he sent me an email on some drill results uh in nicaragua and so it's just a prolific district uh, the whole country is and I said, well, if we want to go and get 10 meters at 10 grams, we just have to drill here. And I showed him all the long sections. So we'd love to put some drilling in. But the answer is no, we're maintaining the social license to operate. We've still got, we've reduced the, the head count. Uh, we are working on some uh, key bits locally that we, we need to, on artisanal miners' plans, uh, and just other small things with the community. Um, we are, of course, looking at other sort of plans. If we don't get the price we want, what happens? And so we've looked at studies for uh, smaller mills, uh, i.e. a pilot plant, say, for example. So we we have been sort of working uh, diligently. But, but of course, the due diligence questions and site visits will you know, take up a lot of management time, as you can imagine. Absolutely. Well, I wish you the best of luck with the sales process, Mark. Condor Gold trades on the AIM under CNR and on the TSX under COG. Mark Child, Chief Executive, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Paul. And that's all from me, Paul Harris. Stay tuned to more from CGS.